Hi everyone, welcome back. As you can tell, I'm not in my normal shop. I'm at the other one right now, and uh, I think it's time we start working on something else. instead of race car stuff because I don't race anywhere near enough and I don't have enough dates to race to uh, constitute doing just racing stuff on the channel and uh, I apologize for any background noise because I've got the Formula One race and I've got a fan going in the background but no big deal don't worry about that um, I know I've dangled the carrot in front of everybody by uh, holding a uh, race car chassis in my backyard for a long time and I started working on it and then all of a sudden I stopped working on it so um, yeah I mean it, it, I will work on it again at some point and I know I'll get going with that chassis. It's, I don't know when, but it's not going away, but times change and uh, priorities change as well. And a lot of stuff kind of came up in the last few weeks. And uh, I kind of put it on the back burner because I have a lot more important things going on and uh, nothing serious, but it's like, I, I need to fix my house and I need to do all this stuff that requires a lot more money than what I'm putting into a race car. And uh, I decided that, uh, like I said, I got another project to work on anyway. You've seen it on here before, I, if you've been watching for a while, I suppose. But it is this. This is my dad's old 1951, well, most of it, Chevy truck. Yeah, there's a lot missing. The front clip is outside. You're probably wondering, what is that suspension? I'll get to that. It's a five window. It's dirtier than heck. It's got a little rust. Needs some of the floorboards replaced. It's got no seat in it. There's cab corners. There's all sorts of junk in here. You know. Stuff is falling off of it. I don't know what's making a house in it, but whatever. Um, I have other stuff for it over here. Sorry about the fan noise again. I've got an engine for it. I just built that distributor out of something. I got a turbo 350 tranny, 350 engine that we pulled out of a truck that was wrecked. And I am putting parts together, I'm falling over here, to try to get this thing running and driving. Okay. Now, I don't know how long it's gonna take. I don't have much money either, but I'm going to do my best to try to get this thing on the road. I wish that I could have got it on the road when dad was still alive. He couldn't get the thing on the road. He owned it for 20 years. He didn't finish it. Um, but we'll get it done. I have faith that we'll get this thing done. And uh, first things first is uh, we got to get the parts all kind of put together and uh, see what we got going. And then we'll start making a game plan for what we have. And uh, yeah, why don't we get to it instead of yakking? All right, so what we have is this 1951 Chevy truck, stock chassis, see? But you'll see that this cross member that's bolted to it is far different because these came with leaf springs and a solid axle with drum brakes in the front. Again, I apologize for the wind noise, but it's incredibly hot in here and I have to do something to try it out. This is odd looking too. This is a steering rack out of a Saab 900. That's not staying, that's just for getting ideas again um, what I've got again we got this cross member that's well kind of a bolt in for a 350 Chevy to bolt into one of these chassis don't really know how it's gonna fit right now but my plan is I'm gonna take that 350 take that turbo 350 put an s10 rear under the back I'm gonna measure it first to see if it even fits under the rear leaves and then we're gonna see if we can get a drive shaft, which I've already got over here. See this old truck drive shaft here to fit without having to make a, a custom one because that would make my life so much easier. So, <laughs> well, First thing is first, we're gonna to have to measure the spring purchase to see if we can get an uh, S10 rear to fit. And uh, I think it's about 41 inches all the way extent to extent 
And uh, there's a little bit of a problem with that right now. Obviously, when you got something that's been sitting here for 20 years, it's gonna pile a bunch of stuff around it. And well, it's kind of impossible to get under there with, yeah. But anyway, I mean, it's a garage. It needs, you, when you have a race team, you get a lot of stuff and you gotta store a lot of stuff. And, Let's get to it. Well, I didn't do the greatest job with like cleaning, but I did find an entire bag of rags, an entire box full of rags. I don't know what this jack goes to, but it should, probably should be in a car or truck. One, two, three port of powers. Full set of wheel dollies, that's pretty useful. 15 uh, cardboard boxes that we can lay on, that's awesome. Uh, another transmission, it's got about one, two, three, four, five sitting on this side, a whole bunch on the other side, but I do Need to just sweep this up, and I might be able to kind of bend under there and get a good measure of what's uh, in between on the old uh, leaf springs there, so I can try to figure out what kind of rear end I can put in this thing. Now, what I wanted to show you was this. When you look at this rear end, hang on. When you look at this rear end, you can see that's not a yoke. That rear end is a, uh, what do you call it? An old torque tube type. And I think my dad just kind of hacked it off because he was gonna change it out anyway. And I've heard of guys taking these trucks and putting a uh, insert, like you can see how it was a drop out snout and you could pull the whole snout out of the rear end. I've heard of guys taking uh, 57 Chevys, I think. They have stock drop out snout, uh, snout rear ends like this, kind of like a Ford nine inch. Uh, or other types like that and um, they take those and they have a regular type yoke on them and they can just stick that on and put a dr uh, drive shaft on it without changing the rear but I'm like I don't know I don't think I like it so I'm gonna just switch it up it's probably gonna be like glass anyway I figured a GM seven and a half out of a s10 might work because I doubt this thing makes 200 horsepower with that 350 it's Kind of junk anyway we race them in these cars and we were putting 350 through them and they seem to last unless you really you know do something stupid but uh if you're just driving around town or going to get ice cream in the truck who cares if i'm going to drag race it or put you know make it a burnout machine i'll probably put a ford nine inch in it but to get it running and driving just throw something in it it'll work you know especially if you don't have to spend the money on it i totally forgot and left you guys in the dark because I was talking to you about the whole truck and the whole front suspension and junk, uh, or front end, but I didn't mention what this cross member was. And anybody eagle-eyed car nut will probably know exactly what it is. It's a square body Chevy truck su front uh, subframe. Now what's interesting is, is you can't just bolt these things into one of these trucks because they're too wide. Usually they're about an inch too wide on both sides or something, but my dad, being the clever guy, that he is, cut it and sectioned it. So now there's no there's no spacers needed to bolt it directly to the frame, which it already is. It's already bolted to the frame. And it's not gonna be incredibly wide where it's gonna be too wide for the truck. It's gonna be about the, the same width as it was before. So yeah, square body Chevy truck chassis, cut, section, brought together, and bolted into the chassis so that's I figured I'd come back and tell you about that before we kept going so here's the carburetor I got to use with this truck something I had on an old truck of mine that I you know taken off because they didn't like it but it had probably more user error on my part than anything else just an old Holly not Holly Edelbrock 1400 series it's uh, a little dirty I got a rebuild kit coming for it, but uh, I don't know, it seems like everything moves here. I don't know how to put this thing back together one-handed, but 
good enough. So I got that, I built the distributor for it, and um, I gotta go to plan B on the old rear end thing. So I measured up a uh, S10 rear and I thought, hmm, spring perches are only like, I don't know, three quarters of an inch off of the uh, leaf springs. And then I got to, I don't know what the hell I stepped on. It felt like a dead animal, but it wasn't, so we're good. So I looked at one of these S10 rears and although the spring uh, perches here and here, well, way over here, I should say, are like three quarters of an inch, eh, a little too narrow. It's still seven inches, seven inches too narrow from wheel uh, axle face to axle face. So I got this sitting around. So continuing the square body theme, this is an old truck arm uh, coil spring rear out of a square body Chevy truck. I don't know, it's been sitting out here probably for 20 years, but whatever truck we got it out of, somebody gave a dang about it because it's been painted. Uh, it is absolutely locked up. Um, yeah, that's probably because of the uh, drums being outside. They're all probably wasted. Um, there's probably water in the rear. I don't know what's in there right now, but uh, my only other problem with this is that it is six lug. So wheel choice on a six lug might be kind of tough. I might have to re-axle it or find a different rear, but again, this thing's a truck arm, so I'd probably have to, you know, zip these mounts off. And uh, I don't know what I'd do with this truck arm mount, probably just unbolt it and leave it. But this rear end is, fifth, I think it's like from the axle or from the brake flanged on the inside to the inside over here is like 55 or 54 and three quarter and the other one is 55-ish. So I guess I'm just gonna have to stick with plan A because that rear end was plan A the whole time. Whereas the S10 rears was kind of plan B to try to make my life a little easier, but oh well. So I think I'm gonna have to end the video off here because I'm out of motivation and uh, I'm out of materials and parts. I still have stuff to kind of show up and get here so I can rebuild a transmission and then rebuild the uh, carburetor and do a whole bunch of other stuff. And now I've got to check to see if those axle tubes are three inch so that I can buy um, leaf spring pad mounts and stuff but uh, thanks for watching I appreciate it like and subscribe if you can and uh, I'll see you next time